Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, earlier today, you heard me recognize Maureen and Cliff Molak. And so I wanted you to know, and, and I've had a lot of conversations with many of you on this floor, and let me start by saying thank you. I want to thank those of you who've come to me and said, I have a problem with this part of the bill. Can we work on it? Because you could have easily just said no. But obviously, you joined me in wanting to combat and prevent cyberbullying. And remember, cyberbullying has become an epidemic. And whether you believe that there's a relationship or not, the rate of suicide amongst our teenagers is also rising dramatically. According to the CDC, young adults are as likely to die from suicide as they are car crashes. As a matter of fact, I think recently, suicides passed the rate of death. But let me give you a little bit of context on how we got here, members. December the 14th, 2015, a year and a half ago, Representative Inamin Hadis and I met with the Vasquez family. Mr. Leo Vasquez, his son, Matthew, had been reportedly harassed online through anonymous social media accounts. I left packages like these on your desk. I'm not going to read everything that's in here. But the disgusting thing is they were using pictures of Matthew that the family had been sharing on Facebook to get support because of his leukemia. And some anonymous coward would say here, congratulations, you managed to suspend my ability from Twitter, but that doesn't mean, and I'm not going to use the word, I'm back. There's nothing you can do. You should be dead. And if we think about it, your cancer will come back and kill you. And further posts, he goes on to say, you know what, let me give you ideas on how you should kill yourself. Members, this coward is still out there. We don't know yet who this person is. That day I met with the school principal, a police officer, and his parents, and law enforcement told me current law is not enough. Five days after we began to work on this bill, Cassidy Hess in the Woodlands, by all accounts a very popular young lady, a varsity cheerleader who went to Bible study, Mom's an architect. Dad was a physical therapist. They said there were no signs. There were no warnings. We didn't know. Took her life. On January 4th, 2016, the ultimate tragedy struck the Molak family. After extensive and inescapable vile online harassment directed at David, a 16-year-old student, an Eagle Scout, a Spurs fan, a fitness fanatic, young man who had a girlfriend, had everything going for him. Also hard to see any signs. I'll never forget when Maureen said at one of the press conferences where she said, I won't be able to hear his feet coming down the stairs. I won't be able to tussle his hair and watch movies with him. Members, and it's just not high school students. That's what's so sad about this. Isabel Scott, 12-year-old, 8th grader from New Braunfels who ran cross country, played softball, hunted and fished with her marine father, took her own life after extensive bullying. You had been at the State Affairs Committee meeting and seen her father, a war hero, who was brought to tears talking about how he should have been able to protect his daughter. Brandy Vela, Texas City. Brandy horrifically shot herself in front of her family. The last things her father heard her say were, please turn away, I don't want you to see this. Her father wrote us a letter. I shared with it you with it with y'all. We did the right thing by going to the police and reporting it because they, we were aware of the problem. Every time we went to report the problem, I was told there wasn't any bodily harm, so there wasn't a crime committed. 
Her killers get to pay. They found the killers. They get to pay a small fine and walk free. Well, I'm having to pay $75,000 worth of medical bills, funeral services, in addition to the grieving death of our loved one. And these monsters didn't stop there. They started sending messages to the family. Hopefully, they used a horrible word, will be too fat to enter heaven. Pictures of her, her face when she shot herself in front of her family. Members, I tell these names and these stories to honor their legacy. But we have to do more. That's the emotion, as Senator Birdwell would say. But I have ammunition, Senator Birdwell. David's Law seeks to combat and prevent cyberbullying by revising three sections of the code. The Education Code, the Civil Code, the Penal Code. The changes to the education code, in my opinion, will empower parents, teachers, and administrators to combat and prevent cyberbullying in schools. Members, the Molak family told me that at the funeral, they had several children come to them and say, I'm so sorry. I knew the bullying was going on, but I was told not to get involved. I didn't know how to, to, to tell you. I didn't know how to report it which is part why we have the anonymous reporting. I hope, members, that it also encourages our schools to modernize and update their bullying policies to include, and many do already do cyberbullying, but to update them. We also want to amend the civil code to allow families to shut down abusive accounts through temporary restraining orders and injunctive relief. And finally, in the bill that we bring before you, we create a new criminal statute, harassment of a child, to cause suicide or seriously bodily injury. And I've been talking to my good friend, Senator Birdwell, and I understand his, his, his concern with that section, and we're going to be uh, taking the amendment that he's bringing forward. And so the section is specifically, we're, we're specifically targeting the most heinous cyberbullying incidences. Davis Law establishes a two-tiered offense depending on the severity of the crime. Because I do think that there should be some consequences to those that, actions that actually harm our children. Yesterday in the Criminal Justice Committee, a gentleman who testifies quite a bit, Mark Levin from the Texas Public Policy, said, the whole point of passing a law, I quote, is to put people on notice. In essence, to let them know what the boundaries are. This bill is about modernizing our school policies and having our current law catch up with evolving technology and social media. I want to thank you all. And I want to thank our leadership. They took time. They knew there were serious concerns. And once again, rather than just doing what happens a lot in the Texas legislature and just having a bill die a slow and mysterious death, they worked with us. As I mentioned, members, every one of you have come up to me and talked to me and expressed concerns and interest in working with us, and I want to thank you all. And so we will be accepting most, if not all, of the amendments that come forward. I'm not, I hope I know of all the amendments. The amendments that we have looked at and cleared, we will be taking. And finally, members, I've mentioned their names. But in the last year and a half, the Molak family, the Hess family, the Scott family, the Vela family, and the Vasquez family, they've walked this journey with us. Maureen, Cliff, to Matt, everyone that you've inspired, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Members, I believe that we have a responsibility to act before we have any more children take their life. I know that this bill won't stop every child from committing suicide, but I hope and pray that we don't have to hear anymore. We didn't know. We didn't know what we could do. I hope we don't have any more children die, and I appreciate your actions. Mr. President, 
With that, I move to suspend the regular order of business to take up and consider the committee substitute to Senate Bill 179.